Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation to have this uh, speech uh, over here. Um, I have changed a little bit uh, the title of my uh, presentation because uh, we are only at the beginning of uh, working with uh, the Interi uh, system in the mental health field. In the field of uh, long-term care facilities for elderly people, we have a lot of experience, but mental health care is a different story. And um, I will uh, talk about the mental health care reform in Belgium. And I think this is a parallel with what is happening here, maybe. Um, then the need for a comprehensive assessment, the results of a pilot study that we uh, are doing actually, and a discussion and conclusion towards person-centeredness and co-production, which is a link with what John Herdes told us uh, lately about the recovery uh, movement. So uh, mental health care in Belgium is in a reform movement since 2010. And the major reason for that is that we are really the uh, number one in the number of beds worldwide. Eh? Uh, this is a figure where you can see uh, Belgium uh, at your uh, left. Eh? Uh, we are in Finland. Uh, I put also a little circle there uh, for, to compare it. Uh, we have twice the number of hospital beds in psychiatry as the, uh, m um, the mean score for Europe. Eh? Uh, so uh, there's no explanation uh, from uh, the public health or epidemiological side for that. It's only a rich tradition of asylums eh? and uh, yeah, a strong uh, political uh, pressure to keep it like that. But the government has decided uh, to turn uh, the, the question and to, uh, to, to um, organize the institutionalization um, movement so that we would have less beds and uh, less long time hospitalizations in psychiatric wards of people with mental health uh, problems. There are other problems also, the unmet needs, particularly in the big cities among people with mental health problems. Overtreatment also is a big problem for specific target groups, for example, uh, neuroleptica in the nursing homes for elderly. Um, uh, antidepressant medication, uh, ADAD, etc. Then uh, psychiatric disorders and uh, addiction are big cause for early mortality. And it's also a point where we wanted to have more a primary care mental health system. And this is the, the direction we are moving into, but it takes a lot of time. And the principles of balanced care are the guiding principles for this mental health care transformation. So the aims of the reform, I will not go into the details, there's a lot of uh, published about it and policy documents, but I put two things in red. The most innovative things since 2010 are mobile teams that go at home for people. And um, mobile teams, you have two types. You have for crisis intervention, mobile teams that go at home uh, during one month. And then you have for people who have uh, severe and enduring mental health problems, the chronic mobile uh, teams, and they go when it is needed and they keep an eye on what is happening and then they can do an intervention when it is necessary. And then a second enormous important part, and this is also very interesting for the interi question, is the fact that they reorganized the mental health care services in networks. Uh, we had a lot of services uh, that or you can recognize uh, from all over uh, the countries you have uh, sheltered living, you have hospital wards, you have hospital wards in general hospitals, you have rehabilitation centers, you have centers for social work, you have, you have a lot of centers. All these services are uh, organized uh, and, and have a policy also that is very different. We have a federal government, we have regional governments, local governments. So you can imagine that they all have their own assessment systems because they all have also to uh, ver give a verification of what they have done with the means they have received. So for patients, it is uh, becoming really a hell because in each service they have a new assessment. Huh? So I come to the 
the point and uh, the networks are necessary. You can see here the figure of Belgium with the geographical um, distribution of uh, these networks. Um, yeah, more uh, dense uh, populations in the north give you also more uh, networks, of course. The south is uh, more rural. Uh, but uh, these networks, 24 networks for adults, uh, you have also in between them uh, services for children that are m momently reorganized also in networks, uh, forensic and services for children and youth uh, and with a disability and comorbidities are also organized in this geographical context. Um, so um, the need for comprehensive assessment was already clear in uh, 2010. We were as a research group at the KU Leuven involved in the evaluation of the mental health reform and already in 2010 I have written a document in which we have compared all the instruments that were in use uh, also with the INDRI and to make a table uh, with the strengths and the weaknesses and the conclusion was we need uh, the INDRI is far the best and the only you can use for this type of <coughs> problem. But it takes a long time. Eh? The ways of policy uh, take a long But now we are so far that uh, the government has take the taken the decision in Flanders, the F Flemish government, not the Walloon, but uh, we hope that will come, um, that there is really a need for this type of assessment uh, so that all the um, participants in these networks speak the same language, share care planning, a uh, coordinated way, improve the continuity of care, improve the efficiency, and uh, also collaborate with the users in the field. So we have psychiatric hospitals, sheltered living, we have um, nursing homes for people with mental health problems, and uh, we also have outpatient uh, clinics. So the coordination and the use of all these instruments that exist is self-evident as a, a scientist looking at uh, this field eh? and also as was already explained and uh, Sharon has presented this you can use it uh, also to close the gap that we also have and you also probably recognize between child and youth mental health services and adult adult mental health services there's a big gap and a lot of people with severe uh, mental health problems fall in this gap and never get on board again of care that they really need. So this is also, this continuity is a very important issue. So the research that we have done now, the last months, is not a research that leads into results in terms of figures and uh, results that we can compare with the nice statistics that were already shown from uh, Canada and overseas. We have as a question, is it feasible, is it suitable, is it acceptable? Um, it's another type of research uh, question. Um, and I think it is an important research question to make sure that you have all the noses in the same uh, direction. Um, so we did a pilot study and um, it is a, what we call implementation research. This Im research uh, to, uh, with, with scientific methods to promote the systematic uptake of research findings into routine practice, in this case the inter-eye, there is a lot of evidence for that, and to improve the quality and the effectiveness of health <coughs> services and care. And we want to understand how and why this type of intervention works or fails to work, what are the bottlenecks we have to uh, tackle in this field, uh, to identify optimal approaches for particular settings and to support and promote successful application. So how did we work? We have an explorative study to start with and uh, we focused on people with severe and enduring mental illness, including addiction. We took this uh, target group because we think that these are the users that have uh, that need several services and that need long-term uh, perspective in care. So this is the target group for the most uh, evident target group for your inter-eye uh, efforts. Um, we have three uh, psychiatric nursing homes, uh, three initiatives for sheltered living, 
uh, three mobile teams for people with uh, chronic problems, and then uh, two inpatient psychiatric uh, wards, two outpatient uh, psychiatric rehabilitation centers where people with severe uh, problems come and enduring problems come. Um, the caregivers completed the instrument, the community mental health instrument, and the addiction supplement, if necessary, on paper for 61 users. And uh, it was a test of the instrument, and it was not a test on the results yet, only the use of the instrument. Um, and they also, f the users, they also filled out the quality of life. We have um, assessments on the attitude of the different uh, professionals involved, as well as the level of policy, the managers and the clinicians, but also we have users and family representatives uh, involved uh, in the attitude assessment. We have an instrument, um, we have an, an uh, assessment of the suitability and an assessment of the feasibility and uh, we went along in a process where we had an expert panel with policy makers and there we already in a qualitative way assessed their attitude against the use of the inter uh, system then a workshop for coordinators of mental health care services uh, network platforms there we had also an, uh, an instrument that we developed a questionnaire with number of attitudes they uh, had to um, fill in. Then we had a one-day education uh, with uh, professionals also and uh, then after that, after the uh, period of, of use, uh, when they completed the instrument, we had again some questionings, very qualitative, with an expert panel of users and family members, with a uh, focus group with the professionals where we did the different assessments we brought uh, together and then we had the second uh, expert panel with uh, the policy makers. So it was a whole process uh, before they knew it, then they had an, a test of it and then afterwards again the same assessment. So what were the results? Well, the results were very positive. Huh? Concerning the core characteristics of the inter system, they are enthusiastic. They say it is a software support that will help us uh, uh, with the immediate availability wherever you are, wherever the patient is. It is an evidence-based input for the care plans. We can share our results. They find this all very, very positive. The group statistics, they expect a lot of this, the quality indicators and also the benchmarking at the different levels, they think that is really a surplus of this system. Um, but there are also some problematic aspects in their eyes, in their opinion. And uh, for the far group of stakeholders, the number one is that it is uh, too much the caregiver perspective. Um, it mainly assesses care needs and functioning and there is not enough uh, attention for the strengths and for the new possibilities of the mental health care users in their opinion. Huh? And uh, for most of the caregivers and coordinators, they think that it is not enough uh, an instrument of the recovery movement. So you must know with this mental health reform, recovery movement came uh, all over the country. There's a lot of enthusiasm and now they have an instrument that uh, is uh, very much focused on needs and assessments in the perspective of the professionals. And um, th what they say is that the client perspective and the caregiver's perspective are complementary and that this complementary uh, complementarity is necessary for a good care plan. Um, another issue, of course, is the workload. Eh? This is really an immense work when you have to start with it for the first time particularly because they all had systems that they found very well. Eh? In many discussions you have a fight between the instruments, eh? the assessment instruments. Um, so this rich tradition must now be replaced by something totally new and yeah, this is not uh, so easy. Eh? Most caregivers insisted that they uh, fill in the inter file together with the mental health care user. Eh? 
Um, and this is also something they have from the recovery idea. Nothing about us without us. You know the slogan. Uh, this activism is making them uh, working like this. And it is, of course, something that is also very time consuming eh, when you do it like that. Coordinators and services find it a problem that um, there's no personal access to uh, the inter I file. Eh? The, the, uh, the persons themselves should have an access in their opinion. Um, then the suitability. Uh, the interact gives a broad overview of the care needs and the functioning of the mental health care users. This is a very positive. Oh, I will stop uh, nearly. Um, you can learn to know your mental health care users. There's a lot of new information, but some domains are very, um, very embarrassing, to, uh, um, embarrassing to question. And uh, they're too privacy uh, sensitive. And sometimes one feels embarrassed that one knows things one shouldn't know. Huh? Um, but they're also a good guide to talk about issues where you shouldn't or you wouldn't talk about when it would not be in the manual. Huh? So um, some uh, people uh, very spontaneously tell their own story. This is also positive, but when you're in time constraints, it can be a problem. And then um, uh, the residential settings, they prefer to use uh, the mental health instead of the community mental health. People who work in the addiction field find the addiction supplement not enough and fe people who don't work in the addiction field they think oh yes that's a very good uh, supplement and then uh, the quality of life survey they find it very uh, suitable because it is formulated from the client perspective um, it is a very fit for a multidisciplinary approach because it brings all the perspectives from the different dif disciplines together um, it is easier to complete a file for somebody who is verbally very strong and enthusiastic than for people who are not. Eh? And also f uh, when you have to fill it in for somebody with whom you have a trusting relationship already. Um, in urgent crisis situations, and this was already told, you have the screeners for that, it is not okay. So in the conclusions and discussion, uh, the person-centeredness of uh, the inter eye is the big issue of discussion with the field when you want to start with it in, in Belgium and in a, in a country where they say we are now in the recovery movement. So um, this is uh, uh, something we have to relate with. We have found a solution for our project. We have uh, made an analysis of what exists in the field of recovery instruments. And uh, these instruments that were made by patients themselves, translated in Dutch and not um, to be paid for. We have uh, presented three of these instruments that we find interesting to take together with the Indri system. And we have proposed them to the uh, reference groups of the patients, of the users. And they could make the choice between the three instruments that we thought that would be feasible to do. And I think this is an intermediate solution to, to come further with the project. But um, I think this is only the first uh, step. Eh? Um, I was thinking further because also with John we had discussion what is this patient-centeredness, where is it, and I uh, found a definition but which I think is very helpful to understand the discussion and uh, to see that uh, the patient-centered measurement, when you define it like this in uh, the American Research Institutes, it is patient-driven, holistic, transparent, comprehensible and timely and co-created, while well, most of our instruments are not co-created and are not in this, when you take it in an extreme way, are not uh, having a high score on these uh, criteria. Uh, does it mean that we have to put them away and replace them? I don't think so, but I think we must relate and negotiate. So we come in a, in a field, in, a, in an area of co-production, and this is also one of the definitions that is used in London uh, by the people who in IMROC are involved in this recovery movement. The co-production is uh, yeah, the, for all public services an idea to uh, work in an equal and reciprocal relationship between professionals and users. 
and I think it is a real challenge. Eh? We are not yet there. We have to uh, change our attitudes. Also in education, we do a lot for our students, but not with our students. And in many services, I think this is one of the points we can think about. Patient and person-centeredness is a complex problem, is a multifaceted problem, and it's not a problem of the clinicians alone. It is also in the organization and also in the whole society, something we have to think about. So I think we cannot solve it with interi alone, but it's an interesting thing. And I would be curious to hear how you are doing it in, um, here in Finland too. This is uh, my team. Um, and Anja de Klerk and uh, Kathleen de Kuyper were involved in this uh, study. They are continuing to work on it and it would be nice to have some exchange with you when you are uh, starting in this mental health reform mm -hmm. to use these instruments. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.